Hello all, I'm Sai and you're watching The Book Dragon. In today's video, I'm bringing to you my February reading wrap up. February was a great reading month for me because I managed reading a total of 17 books. And with those 17 books, I even finished reading 5 whole series, which is totally unbelievable for me because I did not notice that I was reading these many books and I also enjoyed most of the books which I was reading until after the 20th of the month. So even though it was a very short month, it was a great reading month for me. I'll talk about all the standalone books first and then we'll move on to the series. So without any further ado, let's get into the video right away. The first book is Piranesi by Susanna Clark, which is an adult standalone fantasy novel. Even though it is an adult book, anyone who's 13 and over in age can read it because it does not have any adult themes except the main characters here being adults. Basically in this book, we follow this man named Piranesi inside this house from outside it looks like a house but inside it is like a huge labyrinth and for the first huge chunk of the book we just follow Piranesi guiding us through this house and showing us the various places that are inside it. This labyrinth of house is also situated very near to a sea so the huge chunk of the story that is narrated by the author here just deals with the atmosphere in which she puts you in and I should say that that was my most favorite part about this book compared to anything else. There is a mystery plot which starts and that is also really well done by the author. Apart from that, I cannot say that there is much about this book but trust me if you are a person who likes atmospheric writing and a book that can just immerse you in the world that it takes place, this should be on your TBR because it is just perfect for it. I even recommended this book in one of my recent videos in which I talked about 10 different standalone fantasy recommendations. So if you have not read Piranesi yet and if you like beautiful writing and beautiful setups, you definitely have to go forward and read it. I rated it 4 stars. The next one is a short story collection and it is Summer Days and Summer Nights edited by Stephanie Perkins which is a collection of 12 romance YA short stories by 12 different authors and some of the authors whose short stories are part of this collection are Lee Bardugo, Cassandra Clare, Libba Bray and Veronica Roth and all of these authors are huge names inside the YA category. Trust me, each and every one of the stories here just resonates with me in some way or the other because the authors have written them in really really nice ways. There are like just one or two stories inside it which just felt a bit boring for me but apart from that it was a really fun read. Since summer is also around the corner, I'd highly suggest everyone to just pick this up and give it a go because it is kind of big for a short story collection but as a whole it was a really enjoyable experience and I'm really glad that I read this in February because I was looking for some romance book to read during the month and this was the first book which I picked up from my shelf. It has been sitting on my shelf for nearly three years now and finally I picked it up and read and I should say that I was very much satisfied. So if you are a person who is looking out to read some romance book but you don't want full length novel, you should go forward and pick this one. It is a really solid collection of short stories and I rated it 4 stars. The next one is a non-fiction book and it is Meditation and its Methods by Swami Vivekananda. I have been doing meditation for over the past two years and trust me it has helped me immensely in these two years itself. I used to be a very anxious and nervous person two years back and now I don't feel that much like that at all because I have practiced this continuously over the past two years. The effects of it were not quick at all. It took a lot of time for me to see even some really mild effects but all of those effects have been sustained continuously okay. I have not even lost my temper that much when it comes to very anxious situations at work as well as in my personal life as I used to two years before. And I just wanted to know and understand how it has transformed me as a person. So I can say that reading this book about meditations itself was kind of a meditative experience for me. The language of this book is not easy so I have to tell that alone to you guys. If you are a beginner please don't read this book because you will get confused with some, so many of the sentences that the author has written because I think the book was written in the early 1900s and the English here is so much different and difficult compared to that which we see in the modern non-fiction and self-help books. Apart from that it was a great read for me and I'm very glad that I read this as my first book that was written by Swami Vivekananda. I'm sure that I'm going to read some of his other works in the future also. I don't have any plans as of now but reading this book was a great experience for me and it has kindled the desire in me to read more books by the author. If you can handle a little bit of difficulty when it comes to the writing of this book, it is a great read for you. I rated it 4 stars. The next one is an adult contemporary romance and it is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. I specifically wanted to read this in February because I wanted to recommend it to you guys but because of some reasons I was not able to finish reading the book before I made my romance reads recommendations video before Valentine's Day and it was fine because I took my time and read this book slowly and it was completely worth it okay. Here we follow our main character Olive who is pursuing her PhD in this huge university and one particular day what happens is in order to prove to her friend that she is dating someone she ends up kissing this guy out of nowhere and that guy ends up being one of the very grumpy professors inside the college and after this happens for so many reasons both of them start fake dating and because of the fake dating they both get a lot of benefits also in their professional careers. It is really well discussed by the author here 
but more than anything i can say that the author focused a lot more on the academia aspect of this book compared to anything else and that was really well done by the author personally i am a person who likes teaching a lot and i like speaking in front of people who are not aware about some topic which i know in short i can say that i'm just interested in teaching but i was not sure that i wanted to get a career inside that field because of various fears i had and i saw all those fears being experienced by the main character here also so in that aspect in that fear aspect it was relatable for me apart from that all of was also fleshed out to be a great character okay i was able to see her as a person and not just a character in the same time what happened is her romantic interest adam whom we see here did not feel like a human person at all he just felt like a character because i have seen so many characters just like him in so many other romance novels and that is the one point in which the author failed for me apart from that i don't have any problem with this book at all i just enjoyed it from the first page to the last if that male character also had some amount of character build up and he he had also been fleshed out to be a person rather than just a character i think this book could have hit every note for me so because of that i rated this one four stars Next I want to talk about the first series which I finished reading in February and it is the Shades of Magic trilogy by V. E. Schwab. My original plan was to finish reading this series only but after finishing this out of nowhere I just got this enthusiasm and I went forward and binged some other series also. So I read all the three books inside the series. The first one being A Darker Shade of Magic, the second one A Gathering of Shadows and the last and final book A Conjuring of Light. I really enjoyed the series so much. Okay, each and every successive book inside the series just got better and better for me. Here we basically follow a main character Kill who's kind of this magician called an Entari and he has this ability to do blood magic inside this world and the world is also not just a normal world in which we live in. Okay, we have four different colors of the same world and because of these four different colors the magic that is there in each and every one of the four worlds is different. There are some certain cities alone which are used as doorways by these magicians called Antarai and uh, the city which we focus on in this series is London. So because of that we have Red London, White London, Black London and Grey London and all the three books happen across all these four different Londons which we see here. I can easily say that this is kind of a multiversal story and the way in which the author just moves our characters through these different Londons is just amazing. The world building inside the series was something which I enjoyed more than anything because she was able to show clearly the differences between each and every one of the four different worlds which she is showing to us and the different kinds of magic that are being used or misused in all of these four worlds. When it comes to the characters I cannot say that I fell in love with any of the characters because all of them have really good roles to play inside the series but none of them stuck with me until the end. At the same time one thing which I noticed was that the writing of V. E. Schwab in this series was so much different compared to her writing in all of the other books that I've read by her so far. Before this series I have already read six of V. E. Schwab's other books and I personally think that the writing of her is much better in all those six books compared to the series. As a whole it was a really fun series for me to read. I rated the first book 4 stars, the second book 4.5 stars and the final book 5 stars. The next book which I read finishing another series is Chain of Thorns by Cassandra Clare which is the last and final book inside the last star series. This book was published on the 31st of Jan and for some reason it was not available for pre-order on Amazon so I had to wait for it and the pre-order opened and the price was very very high because of that I did not go forward and order the book because I knew that, that that was so much money for just a single book. So what finally happened is on the 3rd of February it came on sale and I went forward and purchased it but even with that I was not able to get the book on the next day itself. I had to wait for one week and it came to me nearly halfway through the month. Trust me if I had pre-ordered the book and if it got delivered on the 31st of Jan or 1st of February this would have been the first book which I read in the month but it did not happen. So because of that I read this only as the last read of mine in February because I did not want to barely read any other book while I was reading this one. Trust me it was a really good decision because I just binged through the 650 page long beast and it did not feel difficult at all okay. Cassie class writing itself is like that okay. If you start reading her books you can get into the shadow world and experience these stories very very easily. But before reading this book itself I knew that this was not going to be one of my favorite shadow hunter books because in some of her interviews itself Cassandra Clare had said that she did not give the actual ending that she planned to give for the last task in her mind because she thought to have a tragic ending for this series. But since all of us have been through a lot of depressing stuff in the past two years she did not want to make it a depressing ending and uh, she did not want to deliver such a thing during this time. So she went with an alternate approach and ended the series in a different way. It's not a happy ending or a sad ending but it's a good ending if you ask me. So if you are a person who is reading the last task you can definitely trust the author and read the last book also. She has a really nice ending plan for all the characters here. As a whole it was a nice read for me and I expected only this kind of a finish for this series so I rated it 4.5 stars. Lastly in the physical books I have yet another series and it is a Tamil series which is Sivagami in Savadam by Kalki again. This is written by the same author as Puneen Silvan 
I read Ponin Selvan last year and I reviewed it and summarized it in both English as well as Tamil. So if you have not checked out my Ponin Selvan playlist yet, I'll link it down in the description. Please do go and check it out. I'm sure that it will be interesting for you guys. So this is a bind up of all the four books inside the series of Sivagama in Sabadam. I did not read them from this physical book actually. I had them on my Kindle so I went forward and read them on the Kindle itself because it was far more convenient for me to read from there. Just like Pony in Sivan, again, I cannot talk a lot about Sivagami in Sivadam because it is not easy to describe the plot of Sivagami in Sivadam just like Pony in Sivan with a few sentences because it has a lot of things going on. There are some things alone which I can tell about Sivagami in Sivadam, okay? This happens nearly 300 to 400 years before Pony in Sivan takes place. Both of the series are not connected in any way, okay? During the time when this series takes place, the Pallavas are the people who are ruling the entire of the south part of India and that king goes on a battle against the king who is ruling the middle part of India and how that is done by the author with a lot of imagination here is the best part, okay? If you can read Tamil, just go forward and read Sargam in Savadam in Tamil, okay? It is just as beautiful as Pony in Selvan. It is not as much grand as Pony in Selvan is because there is so much more going on here. There is not that much going on here. But even with that, the beauty of the writing by the author is not at all diminished in any way at all, okay? This one was actually written nearly 10 to 12 years before Pony in Selvan was written. But even with that, the writing of the author is not less in any way at all when it comes to this series also. Another thing which I want to tell you guys is that I know that most of you people who are watching my videos don't know Tamil. So I also looked up for an English translation of the series and it is translated by Nandini Vijaya Raghavan. So if you want to read the series and as an English translation, you can go forward and pick up that edition. I rated the first book in the series 4 stars and all the other 3 books 5 stars each. As a whole, this was also a really great experience for me to go through and I'm so glad that I read the series. Moving on to the audiobooks, the first audiobook which I read in February is The Queen's Gambit by Walter Tevis. I know that The Queen's Gambit is a limited series on Netflix but I did not know that it was based off on a book. So I went forward and read the book first and then started watching the series. I should say that the author has done a great job of writing this main character. This story basically revolves around our main character Beth Harmon who is a prodigy when it comes to chess. She is so much talented at such a very young age itself. Because of an accident that happens, she becomes an orphan and she is put into this orphanage for girls. While she is in the orphanage, this talent of hers just comes out and because of that she gets adopted also and her life changes drastically. Her adopted mother just helps her so much in order to make the best use of her talent and make that as a career for herself. She is one of the most supportive parent characters that I've read so far in fiction if you ask me. And I should say that each and everything about this book was perfect, okay? I enjoyed each and every short speck of this book. There is a small chunk alone in the last third of the book which I did not enjoy that much but apart from it, it was a great great book to read. I even started watching the series but because of some reasons I did not finish watching it. I have the last two episodes left. I am not able to find the time in order to sit down and watch any series so that's kind of a problem for me. Apart from that, it was just a great reading experience. If you want to read The Queen's Gambit, just go forward and read it. It's completely worth all the hype and I rated it 4.75 stars. The next two books are translated from Japanese. The first of these two books is The Cat Who Saved Books by Sosuke Natsukawa. Here we follow a young boy whose parents have died and he has been brought up by his grandfather alone. And one day what happens is his grandfather dies and because of this he is to be taken over by his aunt and to be grown up by her. His grandfather also owns this huge used bookshop because of which this young boy has read a lot of books and he's also kind of an introvert because of which he does not have that many friends also. So since he's going to be taken over by his aunt, what happens is they have to close the store and sell all of the books on sale. During this time what happens is a ginger cat comes out of nowhere and it starts talking with this boy. What it tells to the boy is that the boy has to help it in order to save some of the books inside this world. They move through this portal inside the bookshop itself to three different timelines and they help save books from three different people who are harming them either with or without their own knowledge. If you are a book lover, trust me, you will just love reading this book because it has all of the kinds of vibes that a book lover wants. I even recommended this in one of my latest videos. So if you have not read this yet, just go forward and try it. I rated it 4 stars. The next one is also the last published book inside a series which is Before the Memory Fades by Toshikazu Kawaguchi which is the third book inside the Before the Coffee Gets Cold series. The fourth book inside the series is actually out in Japanese but the English translation is not yet available so I'm waiting for that fourth book but as of now I caught up with this series also so this is the fourth series which I finished reading in February. I read the first two books inside the series last year and I should say that the first book was totally out of the world for me. Here we basically follow 
the stories of so many different people who come to this cafe inside Japan and the special thing about the cafe is that there is this particular table inside the cafe where the customers can go and sit and from there they can travel back in time or forward in time. They have one rule alone, they have to travel back in time and get back to the present before the cup of coffee that is served to them gets cold. It is an amazing magical realism series. So if you are a person who likes Japanese culture or if you want to read kind of melancholy magical stories, you need to try this series. I am sure that this series already has a lot of fans out there in the world and it is also complete deserving. I am just waiting for the fourth book to get a translation and I'll definitely read it once it's out. This also was a great installment inside the series and I rated it 4 stars. The last audiobook is a non-fiction book and it is The Happiness Project by Gretchen Rubin in which the author talks about various things that you can do in order to be happy and not unhappy. Okay. The central theme of this book is that you need not be sad in order to become happy. Okay. You can be not happy and try to become happy as well. It's not like only sad people need to try ways in order to become happy. You can always be happier. So you have to pursue that direction and try to make your life even more happy because you deserve it more than anyone else. This was kind of a half good half bad read for me so I rated it 3.5 stars. At last talking about the one manga alone which I read in February. It's also a series so that's why I said 5 series in the beginning of the video. It is Uzumaki by Junji Ito. Okay, This is my first ever horror manga series and also my first ever manga by Junji Ito. And I should say that I was not that much satisfied with what the book delivered to me. Okay, I had really really high expectations for this one. I should say that it was really really well done. At the same time it also disappointed me in some aspects. Okay, The basic concept of this book is that there is a small coastal town in Japan. And the thing about this town is that it has been obsessed with spirals. And because of this the spirals have become kind of a disease or an infection inside the town. And because of this the spiral is actually consuming each and everything inside the town. It is very very I did not like the approach that the author took in the first half of the series and used all those chunks together in the second half. The second half was something which I enjoyed a lot more compared to the first half. I can understand that the second half could not be that much fun if not for the first half. But the first half just felt like it tackled a lot of things as different pieces of the story that were happening across different parts of the town. He has a lot of themes also that are being explored by him in the second half which I felt like a treat while I was reading it. As a whole it was a nice experience reading this manga but it was not as good as I expected it to be based on all the expectations that I had built upon myself seeing other people talk about it. So I rated it 4 stars. So yes guys, those are all the 17 books which I finished reading in February and it was a great, great reading month for me. If you found any recommendations from this video or, or if you've read any of the books that I've talked about so far in the video, please do comment down below and tell me how you felt about those books. And if you did enjoy watching today's video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also share it to your friends. If you want to get more content from me, do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.